Hey, welcome everybody to You Can't Make This Up. All right, are you ready to roll? Well, we have some exciting things. Hey, join me this Sunday morning, Gospel of John, this Sunday evening, Daniel chapter 11. Oh, wow, is that a crazy chapter? So looking forward to both of those with you this coming Sunday, and I'll be in Israel next week. And can't wait for that. It's going to be a great time. If you're not going with us on the upcoming tour, we'll send pictures. We'll have them for you guys. Okay, so you're ready to roll. Uh, might as well start here because this is kind of humorous. This is Tedros, the director of World Health Organization. Listen to what he has to say. You guys ready? You're going to think this can't be real. It's, does Babylon B have a video? No, he actually is saying this. Check it out. Let's roll this. Let me be clear. WHO did not impose anything on anyone during the COVID-19 pandemic. Not lockdowns, not mask mandates, not vaccine mandates. We don't have the power to do that. We don't want to. <laughs> we sure are looking for it. What does he say right after that? We don't want it. it and we're not trying to get it. Our job is to support governments with evidence-based guidance, advice, and when needed, supplies to help them protect their people. All right. So there you, I mean, you have to admit, that is kind of humorous. I mean, there's actually, here's the thing. That was at the World Government Summit just, what, a week or two ago? So he actually, there's actually, this is the hard thing. There's people that actually believe that. They believe what he's saying. We didn't impose mask mandates. We didn't do any of these things. Oh, no, we would never do such a thing. I'm telling you, these people are liars. All right, so you ready to roll? Check this out. So here in America, we're dealing with all this wokeism. And uh, one of the, the issues that's part of wokeism is in the NFL, the Washington Redskins, they were... Uh, forced to changing their name to some moronic name, the Washington Commanders, because Redskins was so offensive to Indians. Well, guess what? That ain't going so well since they changed their name. Check this out. Washington Redskins. There you go. You can read it. As you read that, you look, you go, is this really real? Yes, folks, this really is real. What's that say there? The Washington Commanders are being sued by the Native American Guardians Association, which has been trying to get the commanders to change the name back to the Redskins. Why is that? The lawsuit states, the logo on the Redskins helmet is an actual person. It's Chief White Calf. There you go. Every time they go out on that field, they were honoring the chief and they were... Look at, look at this, battling on the football field with the same honor and integrity and courage, they should continue to honor that. You got to look at that and go, it was an honor to be called the Washington Redskins and to have the chief's face on the helmet, but you liberal white guys decided that that was offensive to us who are Indians. Ugh. Man, I, I look at this and the absurdity of these things is just really something else. All right. Let's take this on to a little bit more of a serious note. Nope, let's wait on the serious note. Just want you to know, I have my Joe Biden coin here. The, uh, I, I love this coin, zero cents. That's what it says on this side. Zero cents and a picture of Uncle Joe on this side. Zero cents. It's one of my coins to remind me of just how there's no sense there in the, uh, that whole Washington, D.C. area. Okay, a little bit more of a serious note. This is a video posted by Naftali. Check it out. Protest against Israel. It's a massive protest. Check out this reel. Check out this reel. There you go. Look at that. The anti-Israel protest in Lundestan, as Naftali calls it. They hate Israel 
more than they love Palestinians. They didn't protest when Bashar al-Assad butchered over 200,000 Arabs. They didn't protest when Lebanon built an apartheid wall around the largest Palestinian refugee camp. No, they don't protest against any of those things. Listen, and the protests are much more severe. I mean, it's absolutely horrific to see what's happening. But what the Arab community has done to the Arab community, butchering millions of people, the refugee camps that are squalor, Arab to Arab, you don't hear a single peep out of any Western news organization. No, all you hear about is stuff like that. How bad is Egypt? And it is everywhere. Well, guess what? Check this out. This next video, super short. Egypt won't put up with, and they don't want anybody from any Gaza coming into Egypt. Check, check out this short little clip. Let's look at the Egypt wall. Look at this. Look at that, look at that wall, folks. Did you see that? So here in America, we can't have walls, Texas, so forth. You can't have walls. It's insane. Israel's not allowed to have a wall. Uh, Israel's being uh, labeled as you're keeping these people in prisons. This is what you're done, by, even by people on the right, like Candace Owens and others. And yet Egypt puts a wall like that. Have you guys heard, have you heard one single person say anything about the wall down in Egypt to keep the Palestinians coming into Egypt? I bet you haven't heard a single word if you haven't seen something like that. That's right, because nobody will touch this. Why? Because all they want to do is say how bad Israel is. Well, let's move on from there because, again, you can't make this up. Here's some more facts. Joe Biden administration, look at this. Biden admin flew 320,000, it should say, illegal immigrants into the U.S. last year. And then look at that. You see that up there in the right-hand corner where you can read it up there? You look at that and you say, okay, Joe Biden. So this is what's going on. The Biden administration has used secretive flights to transport migrants into the U.S., adding to the massive influx at the southern border, a Center for Immigration Studies of Freedom uh, of Information Act ha lawsuit has discovered. For more on the story, you can go to Newsmax and check that out. By the way, a shout-out to Newsmax. They have some great things going on there. Uh, Allison Steinberg just does an outstanding job there, and I'm watching the things that are taking place there. Bob Tyler, and uh, the, the uh, head of uh, one of the directors at Temecula Valley School District in Southern California, were on Newsmax, standing up for parents because of the madness here in California. News, Newsmax is a great, great place, but you look at that, what Biden does, yes, over 300, what's it, 320,000 people? Man, oops, Allison's on OAN. Oh, both of those, oh, I blew that one. Allison's on OAN, not Newsmax, and so was Bob Tyler and the, the board member from the Temecula Valley School District. Hey, Newsmax is great too. By the way, speaking of Newsmax, Dan Cohen, he is on Newsmax, and I get to see Dan uh, when we're down there in Israel next week. I'm sorry, I love both organizations. They're both doing an outstanding job, and I'm becoming friends with them, and it is terrific. And we got to press forward against this nonsense. And uh, listen, we're both fighting uh, of this spiritual battle. I love what Allison's doing. I love what Dan is doing. OAN and Newsmax. Praise the Lord. All right, let's move on. So I'm going to show you an, another video. This one is, um, it was on the Dave Rubin Show. David taking a clip. It was Jordan Peterson, Tom Bilyeu. It's about a minute long, but it really puts into perspective. Too bad they don't have the right spiritual perspective, right? It kind of messed up on that, but we'll bring in the right spiritual perspective. So uh, they, their conversation in this minute and 14 seconds, it takes us through everything that you and I know, except we have the Bible to help us understand and put it into the right context, but they can see what's going on. Uh, let's roll this. You've got conflict, Russia, Ukraine. You've got conflict, Israel, uh, You've got the farmers Gaza. Revolt, Europe. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. where does this go? Look, I did a little... Jordan Peterson move right there, which is a good segue because we got a little Jordan Peterson. Right. Where does this all go? You've got Canada has declined economically. You guys are now making 60% of what Americans are making. China God, is, we can do worse than that. With oh, Jesus, let's hope not. 
Uh, China is watching everything everybody does. They're way beyond 1984. Mm -hmm. 2024 in the U.S. is uh, it's terrifying. The election does it actually build up to civil war? I don't know. Yep, UK. Yeah. You've got conflict Russia Ukraine. You've got conflict Israel. Uh, You've got the farmers Gaza. revolt in Europe. Yeah, like mm -hmm. where does this go? Uh, it depends on how many of us shoulder our crosses and walk uphill. I I really mean that. Like we're at that point. Wake up, figure out which side you're on. If you were a betting man, mm -hmm. what odds do you give um, U.S. Civil War? What odds do you give World War III? Well, we, huh. we're already in World War III. I mean, you look at that, you start seeing the convergence of all these things. Two secular guys. By the way, did you notice the... The necklace that Tom was wearing, it was uh, it's the hostage. It's it's remember the hostage, bring them back necklace that uh, David Tao has through um, through Gihon Springs. And by the way, check out Gihon Springs too. You're looking for how to support Israel. I know a lot of you guys are. Listen, it is a great ministry. I haven't talked about them uh, in a bit, but uh, check out Gihon Springs and uh, go to their website. We'll put it uh, in the description so you can just click on it and go there. It's a great ministry to support. We appreciate your support here for Hope for Our Times. We couldn't do what we do without you guys. But really, when we look at this, hey, let's make the best of everything that we possibly can as we race toward the goal. And Gihon Springs is an excellent way to reach into the lives of people over in Israel that both Jew and uh, Muslim, Jew and Arab would be saved over there. But I love that necklace that he was wearing in that. But you could hear him talking secular opinions, getting together and both talking about the same things we do, except we have the Bible. We can bring the Bible into the conversation and say, hey, the Bible speaks into all of these things that we see that are going on. And you got to admit, it's kind of interesting. Wow. If you look back at the last four years, how unbelievable it is this world has changed. And everybody knows, baby, something's going down. Things are different. Something is coming. All right. So check this out. You ready for the next one? Okay. This is Brinks down in Texas. Things happen in Texas too. Everything is perfect. Not down there. Uh, not perfect down there too. Uh, there, there is crime. So this Brinks guy, he's, he, it's a robbery of a Brinks in Texas. They steal his pants. Look at this. Le están robando una persona, wow. Wow, qué fuerte. No puedo creerlo. Tiene una pistola y es el seguridad del banco, es el que tiene los los camiones. Tiene una pistola. Wow, está robando la caja fuerte. Oh man, they stole his pants. A, a, the Brinks guy. I mean, take the money. Maybe, maybe they just wanted the pants. They didn't want the money. I don't know. But you look at that, you go, this is, I mean, man, this world's messed up. Listen, everything is falling into place. In the words of Jan Markell, it's not falling apart. Everything is falling into place. These are reminders, folks. Lawlessness is abounding. Things are getting worse and worse. The love of many is growing cold. There's wars and rumors of wars. Absolutely awful things are happening. Then, you, I mean, you look at Russia, you look at Iran, you look at China, you look at the zero cents presidency of the United States of America, you look at Kamala Harris, we have elections that might happen, that might not happen. You look at the borders, not just here in America, the borders in Europe are way, they're way worse than what we are experiencing here in America, way ahead of us. You look at what's going on in Canada, Australia, look all over the world, Africa, South America, obviously the Mideast. And you look, you go, well, why not throw this into the mix too? These are the fires in Texas. And I talked about this on Wednesday, but check out the fires in Texas. What's really going on there? Coincidence? Mysterious wildfires destroy Texas beef industry and largest wildfire in state's history. Okay, so you think about that. And you think, what in the world is going on? Uh, I, I asked this question. Is this that what directed energy weapons? Is that what's going on? There's questions about the Maui fires. I mean, we all know 
everything blue doesn't burn. Paint your roof blue. I think you're going to be okay. I, I, something weird's going on. Why do things melt here? A metal completely melts into molten liquid while something right next to it, a green tree, doesn't even catch on fire. Why is that? And then you see what's going on in Texas. What's going on with the meat industry? We've seen, we've seen this going on with cattle and with poultry for the last few years, massive die-offs. And then we, we know that these globalists are telling us, uh, you need to eat bugs. So we look, oh, we got to eat bugs. Well, it's a reminder, 1 Timothy chapter 4, in the latter days, they will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, having their mind seared as if with a hot iron, speaking lies and hypocrisy, forbidding to marry, and commanding that you don't eat meat. Interesting, that term meats or food there, it comes from a Greek word that literally applies to meat, primarily, and things that God has given you to sustain your life. And then God goes on and says in that passage how wrong it is for you to forbid somebody and not eat the things that God has given us to eat and be re if they're received with thanksgiving. For God has created these things, and, they, and he said they are good. But isn't that weird that the Bible said, hey, in the last days they're going to say you can't eat meat? And then we keep seeing this? And then you have these strange fires in Texas. I'm curious... My friends in Texas, what you guys think is up with those fires, uh, very strange. Then you start looking at Maui or Lahaina, weird stuff. All right, a couple more things. Let's start bringing this home uh, because we need the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, do we ever. A couple of last stories are really going to drive home uh, the reality that we need, we need Jesus. And no politician is going to be the Savior. Listen, I believe in voting. But nobody's going to be our Savior. We need Jesus. And, and I want you to think of this also. When Jesus came the first time, you had the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was made up of the, the political left, which were the Sadducees, the political right, which were the Pharisees. And both of them agreed and voted to have Jesus put to death and turned him over to the Romans. Both the right and left did. Why is that? Because Jesus wasn't the political Savior. He wasn't the victor over Rome that they wanted the type of Messiah they wanted. Folks, it's happening right now. Even in Christianity, Jesus of the Bible isn't pe people, they want a Messiah that's going to give them victory over the bad Romans right now. I do too. I would love that. I hate what's going on in Washington. I hate what the globalists are doing. I preach up against that stuff all the time. But ultimately, we need to remember that Jesus is on the throne. Check this out. Couple more stories. Abortion without limits. Look at this from LifeSite News. Maine Democrats push bill to create rights to unlimited abortion, transgender mutilation. I mean, folks, you'll start thinking about where we are as a people. And you think this is sick. Giving heed, again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, giving heed to doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits. And people do this, 2 Timothy chapter 3 claiming to be spiritual, claiming to know God, claiming to be right with him. Well, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Also a reminder of Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Lord, didn't we do that in your name? I'm convinced many of the people are saying, well, yeah, abortion in the name of Jesus, or this in the name of Jesus. Jesus says there in Matthew chapter 7, depart from me, I never knew you. Listen, uh, check out HopeForOurTimes.com, the website for daily news articles. Uh, you're going to be super blessed by them. They're free. Uh, just go there, check them out. Uh, you're going to be really blessed. And check out the other things that we have on the website, too, while you are there. Um, everything we have is on the website. All the videos, everything we do is on there. We keep adding more and more all the time. All right. There it is. Check, and check out the, the store that we have, too. Uh, great things are there. Okay. Number 10, media won't report, look at this, this is horrific. Uh, media won't report on the Studer murder by uh, illegal immigrant. Media blackout as thousands gathered to mourn uh, Lake and Riley at vigil. Media doesn't want to talk about this stuff. Can you guys read what that says there on the right of that picture there? I mean, it's absolutely awful, uh, absolutely awful but thousands of people gathered for a vigil at the University of Georgia 
to remember the life of 22-year-old nursing student Lakin Riley, who was brutally murdered by an illegal immigrant while she went out for a morning jog on her college campus. The murder suspect, 26-year-old Jose Antonio Ibarra, illegally crossed into El Paso, Texas in September of 2022, was released from U.S. Customs and Border Protection custody. Wow. Network news talking heads don't want to cover these types of things. Why? Because it goes against the nerve. This is what I believe and I'm pretty sure you believe it too. The media has been bought by the George Soros and by the Chinese, and we are being lied to. And these talking heads on mainstream media, they'd rather take the money that they're being paid to, you say this and you say this only, they refuse to speak the truth. That's a reminder of Romans chapter one that the truth will be suppressed in unrighteousness. Romans chapter one, check it out. And God says, I'll give them over to a reprobate mind. Friends, you look at all of these different things that are going on, you think, wow, where are we? Well, if you don't know the Lord, you, you think of Jordan Peterson and Tom Bilyeu, you think if you don't know the Lord, you can see everything that's going wrong. Listen, we need Jesus. We need the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember this, in Daniel chapter 12, Daniel's told by the angel, hey, in that day, speaking of the last days, the wicked will see it, but they won't understand. The wise will. They will understand. In other words, those who are paying attention to the prophetic scriptures will understand what's going on. Listen, pay attention to this. Don't be moved to the left or the right. Stay in the word. And a lot of people ask me, how do you keep from being deceived? It is this and only this because so many voices are telling you, don't pay attention to this. That alone should be a sign to you. Oh, I need to pay attention to that. AI is out there, AI Jesus, AI Bibles, all these things going on. Folks, stay focused on the word. And something else I believe you need the written word. If we're not raptured soon, it's just a matter of time before Bible apps will go away and all that type of thing, then what will you have? We need the written word. Make sure you have Bibles. Make sure you have them available for yourself, for your family. And listen, since we love to share Christ, that you'd have them available for your friends too. Or, um, keep them with your food storage. Listen, people tell me, should I prep? Well, if you prep, hey, listen, and you get raptured, you don't get to use your food, praise the Lord. Your neighbor's gonna break in and take all your food, so make sure you have some Bibles in there. Hey, you can have the rapture kit in there, things like that that are really, that are gonna have spiritual value. Uh, they can get your food, physical value, and get the truth of Jesus, spiritual value. Isn't that cool? And then all, we'll be up in heaven. All of a sudden, they're gonna show up in heaven one day, and they're gonna go, wow, you had all of those things in that prep room of yours. I got saved because of your testimony and the things that you left behind for me. That's pretty cool. Hey, listen, God bless you guys. Sunday morning, hey, Come enjoy church with us. We're in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Sunday evening, I'll be in Daniel, chapter 11. It's a wild chapter. It's a great chapter. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you and appreciate your prayers as we continue forward into Mexico. I'll give you updates on Mexico, what's coming, as we're, we're just partnering with some things down there. I'll give you updates in, in uh, April after we get back from Israel. And then also um, pray for us going to Israel. It's going to be a great time. And if you're not with us, I'll be sending pictures on social media. God bless you guys. See ya.